Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. You know, with all of this talk about sugar and carbs and uh, avoiding sugars uh, being so important for health, you know, you might think that, well, then maybe this is a call for all of us to be jumping on the artificial sweetener uh, bandwagon. And I'm just going to uh, tell you that that's not what you want to do. There is no free ride. We're seeing a lot of literature that challenges the wisdom of this notion that we should be using artificial sweeteners. Let's take a look. So, of course, this is what we're told to do. If you don't want to drink uh, a sugar-sweetened beverage, you're told to reach for diet this and diet that. But it looks as if new uh, literature is really challenging the wisdom of whether we should be doing that or not. Uh, this is a report uh, entitled Fueling the Obesity Epidemic, Artificially Sweetened Beverage Use and Long-Term Weight Gain. Think about that. Artificially sweetened beverages being associated with weight gain. This was published in the journal Obesity uh, back in 2008. And what the researchers did was they looked at 3,682 adults, followed them for eight years, and looked at their consumption of artificially sweetened beverages, and at the same time looked at how many of these individuals became either overweight or frankly obese, and uh, did so by looking at what is called their body mass index. And what they found was truly remarkable. I think this is a very powerful slide looking at how much uh, was consumed, how many artificially sweetened beverages were consumed per week uh, at the baseline of the study. And then over time, what was the change in the body mass index? And you'll see, moving from left to right, those individuals on the left who did not consume artificially sweetened beverages, uh, their, in, their change in their body mass index uh, in fact, didn't really change uh, 0.9. Uh, so uh, as you get more and more consumption of drinks throughout the week, up to 22 or more, you see a dramatic increase in the body mass index, which basically correlates to how big is the belly. And these researchers indicated that, and I quote, we observed a classic positive dose response relationship, and I'll explain that, between artificially sweetened beverages and long-term weight gain, meaning that it's just like a drug. The more you do, uh, the more you get the response. That's called a dose-response relationship. It's uh, like, for example, if you took a blood thinner, the more you took, the thinner your blood would be. In this case, the more artificially sweetened beverages you consumed, the bigger would be your belly. Well, uh, French researchers have also looked at the wisdom of consuming these artificially sweetened beverages and they did a very large study looking at close to uh, 66,000 or just over 66,000 women and followed them for a long time, 14 years, looking at their consumption of uh, sugar sweetened beverages and in comparison to those who drank artificially sweetened beverages and wanted to determine was there a relationship between the consumption of these beverages and a development of type 2 diabetes. Now you'd think that the people who use the sugar sweetened beverages would obviously have a higher risk of becoming diabetic and here's what they found. Look at these curves. Uh, on the bottom we're looking at how many cc's, how many uh, milliliters of um, beverage was consumed as an average each week and then uh, measuring that against the risk during the study of developing type 2 diabetes and what you see uh, which uh, seems really counterintuitive, is that those individuals consuming the artificially sweetened beverages had a dramatically higher risk for developing type 2 diabetes in comparison to those who drank the sugar-sweetened beverages. You wouldn't have expected that. Uh, that's why I felt it was important. This is actually a, a graphic from the blog that I created uh, when, the, uh, when I reviewed this information. So. Uh, next, we look at why it might be happening. And, you know, we've puzzled over this for quite some time. Why is it if you're not uh, using um, sugar, why would you have a high risk of becoming obese? Why would you have a high risk of becoming diabetic? And these Israeli searcher, uh, researchers, rather, uh, searchers, I guess, they were searching for answers, uh, had a very interesting quote, and it's uh, on, towards the end of their study. Let me just amplify this forward. Together with other major shifts that occurred in human nutrition, this increase in non-caloric 
artificial sweetener consumption coincides with the dramatic increase in the obesity and diabetic epidemics. Our findings suggest that non-caloric artificial sweeteners may have directly contributed to enhancing the exact epidemic that they themselves were intended to fight. What these researchers discovered is that the likely mechanism that relates artificial sweeteners to increased risk of obesity and to type 2 diabetes uh, is the changes that these artificial sweeteners induce in the microbiome. That's what these researchers described in this incredible research. Well, you know, it's, um, it's not nice to try to fool Mother Nature. And it reminds me of back in the early 1970s, there was a chiffon, uh, like a butter chiffon, it was some kind of margarine uh, commercial that talked about how it was not nice to fool Mother Nature. Let's watch. Mother Nature, I didn't know you were so fine on the vine. Well, there's a lot you don't know. I'll bet you don't know about this. Oh, come on. That's a stick of my sweet, creamy butter. That's chiffon stick margarine. Chiffon stick margarine? Right. Chiffon fooled you. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. If you think it's butter, but it's not, it's chiffon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I think it really, um, it really tells a great story. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye-bye.